Head Lake. 5.30 a.m. on July 7th. This was my sixth day on the trail. I loved being out on the water early in the morning. The sunrises were spectacular, and I usually had the water to myself, even on popular lakes like Moosehead. Luckily, the wheel kind of stabilized it halfway over, and I was able to get it over without, I don't think, taking any water on and not losing anything. I hope. <laughs> I don't think so. So, anyways, um, I put my pack back on. The pack had been in the canoe, um, but I think a little less weight is going to be a good thing. So, I'm carrying it now. I don't think it's too much farther. I just wanted to show you how the Northeast Prairie looks when it's had a heavy rain. To get to Lobster Lake, I literally had to paddle upstream both ways on Lobster Stream. Apparently, the elevation of Lobster Lake and the elevation of the west branch of the Penobscot River are so similar that heavy rain can actually force Lobster Stream to reverse its direction. I've never heard of this before, and it was really, really cool to experience this phenomenon firsthand. Although, I wouldn't have minded experiencing the downstream direction <laughs> instead. Off in the distance, to my right, you'll see one of the few elm trees that survived the Dutch elm disease. Elm trees in America had no resistance to this disease, which was brought here by Asian bark beetles in the 1920s. Only a few elm colonies survived, including some in remote areas of northern Maine. I took a side trip to Lobster Lake, which I had heard was not to be missed. It was named Lobster Lake because its shape resembles a giant lobster claw.
this is my campsite on Lobster Lake. It is beautiful here. I have a sandy beach. I do have some neighbors close by on the left, but they seem like a cool, quiet couple, so hopefully that'll be okay. Got a cool tree grove back here to hang my hammock from. that view. The only downside, I do have a resident red squirrel. He's already introduced himself. Um, just running around the edges. He hasn't done anything bad yet. Yet. <laughs> the first thing I always set up in camp was my tarp so that I'd have a dry place to go if it started raining, like today. I loved seeing this flag here when I arrived at this campsite. Independence Day had just been a few days prior and the previous campers, I assume, had celebrated the holiday here, and then they left the flag right where you see it now. I kept it up during my stay, and then I left it there for the next campers to discover as well. I spent two nights at this beautiful campsite. I arrived here a day ahead of schedule because I had made fantastic time on Moosehead Lake and skipped Seba McPoint campsite. Lobster Lake was the perfect place to take a day off and was a true zero day for me. I slept in the next morning, I aired out all my gear, I went swimming, and then I just relaxed on that nice sandy beach. All right, first big rainstorm, tarp's doing great. Of course, it's the one time that I wish I had gotten the tarp lower. I always, always want it higher. I finally got it higher because the trees are just situated well. And then it rains and I wish it was lower. But with the sand here, it's really not splattering much or getting in much so far, which is good. Sorry, that was probably a little fast. But the front closed nice. And uh, just going to try to wait it out. Those two squirrels keep running through here. They're making me mad I'm trying to hit them with my water bottle. I'm gonna get them. Same storm. It's getting really crazy though. I'm just sitting on my canoe chair. I'm really glad I brought it. And uh, just watching what I can see out my little hole there. Beautiful afternoon here on uh, Lobster Lake in Maine. So it looks like we've got yet more storm clouds coming in. The last two days have been crazy weather wise. Um, there was like a four hour thunderstorm last night from four to eight, and it was still raining at nine. Um, I just sat on top of for hours. It's crazy. After leaving Lobster Lake, I had planned to camp the next night at Thoreau's Island on the west branch of the Penobscot River. Alex had stayed there on his through paddle and highly recommended it. I stopped there briefly, but I could not stay there. <laughs> the mosquitoes were terrible. You may have noticed the, all the bugs in a couple of the earlier shots and they were nothing compared to what they were on this island. I don't know if it was the time or what, but they were really bad. Um, I needed to find a breezier site to keep some of those bugs at bay. So I knew there were multiple campsites downstream and the water was moving fast from all the rain the last couple of days. So I just continued downstream. In the 20 miles that I traveled on the West Branch Penobscot, I only saw one other person. This was a lovely remote section of the trail.
Once I arrived at a campsite that I was thinking about staying at, I'd tie up Winnie and scout it out before I unloaded anything. I'd make sure that it didn't look like it was already taken, make sure there was nobody there. Um, I'd make sure that there was a good spot to hang a hammock. And I'd also make sure that there weren't too many bugs. I found out that I will take a windy spot over a buggy site any day. <laughs> If everything at the campsite looked good, then I'd unload my gear and carry Winnie up to the shore before turning her upside down. I tried to keep everything together and orderly so that there would be less chance of me losing something. Big Island North Campsite. Got the boat out of the water, now to get the tarp set up and get camp set up. Once I had everything up on the shore, I'd always get the tarp set up first. After that though, the order really varied a lot day to day. If it was hot, I'd probably go swimming before I got anything else set up. Other days, I might get the hammock and the quilts hung up and kind of taken care of and out of the way. I'd usually need to filter more water, both to rehydrate my dinner and also for drinking for the night. One of the highlights of each day was taking off my wet boots, drying out my feet, and then changing into my camp shoes. I'd boil some water and usually would do my daily journaling while waiting for my backpacking meal to rehydrate and heat up. After eating my dinner, I'd usually shift my focus to the next day. I'd review both the map and the guidebook for the next day's section, um, and then I'd input the next day's route into my GPS. Um, so I got everything packed up. Um, this is the Big Island North campsite. Um, so everything was packed up, and now I just got to get it all stowed in the boat and get underway. I think I've brought about eight miles today to get to Chisunko. And then I'll be sleeping under a roof, my last night on this trip under a roof, so I'm looking forward to that. And home cooked meal, that sounds amazing too. I'm looking forward to today. The river's moving really nicely. I think because of all that rain we've had over the last couple of days. Um, but nice and smooth. There's like one rock <laughs> to look out for down there, but the, the river's pretty, pretty easy, which is awesome. So I'm still going to keep a close look out and make sure that nothing changes with this water level. Um, so I'll keep an eye out. But um, hopefully it will be a nice, relaxing day. The skies are a little cloudy, so I'm going to keep my rain gear handy. Um, no water overnight in the morning, but it's just kind of cloudy everywhere. So see how the day progresses. This morning on the river was overcast and wet. I do actually enjoy paddling in this kind of weather, as long as I have good rain gear, which I do. The rain just tends to keep other people away, and the mist makes everything feel secret and quiet. I feel like I'm the only person in the world.
At the exact moment that I reached Chisuncook Lake, the clouds dissipated and revealed bright sunshine which reflected off of the rippling surface of Chisuncook Lake. Coming from the misty, quiet morning here felt like stepping back through the wardrobe. And cook. You can kind of see Mount Katahdin over there underneath the clouds. I broke into sun as soon as I got on Chisun Cook Lake. And then about the time I got here to the beautiful lake house, it started to get windy and it's kind of been going back and forth. So I think it might be nice <laughs> to be indoors tonight. Suncook Lake House is a lovely inn where I'd be staying for the night. My last night in a bed on this trip. They also provided me with a delicious chicken dinner and a hearty early morning breakfast of bacon, eggs, and fresh fruit. I left Chisuncook Lake House with mixed feelings. It marked the halfway point of my journey. I felt like I had proved to myself that I could definitely do this. There would be no more beds, no more non-backpacking meals for the second half of the journey. But ahead of me was the section I had most been looking forward to, the remote Allagash Wilderness Waterway. So still on Chisunkook Lake. Um, this off to my left here, swing around and try to show you, is, um, I can't pronounce it right, but the Magok. <laughs> stream something like that that was my initial plan um, that is the start of the Allagash Lake Loop um, which is very remote and supposed to be very beautiful um, I was really looking forward to doing it but I just have not been able to get any good information about the conditions on that um, loop we had two big thunderstorms not too long ago um, just a couple days ago and I know that the lake itself here is definitely higher, um, significantly than normal, which is some kind of docks underwater. Great Red Point Dock is partially underwater. And without getting more information, there's a lot of upstream going there, and there's a small stream coming down out of the uh, Allagash Lake to finish off the loop. Um, both of which, if they're flooded, could be very difficult to ascend, and then also dangerous to descend a flooded small creek. There's already that I know I've got normal water levels, two ledges and one rapids that I probably was going to have to portage around anyways on Allagash Stream. So I just, I just don't have a good feeling about it. So as much as I was excited about doing that part, uh, I also realized that this whole, <laughs> everywhere I'm going is beautiful and remote. I haven't seen all that many people. Um, particularly early in the mornings. Um, so it's it's just not worth the risk. This trip is um, <laughs> a challenge enough and um, dangerous enough that I don't need to push it doing an extra little section like that. Um, so I also am not doing the mud pond to carry that. Um, I probably would have to triple carry my stuff, which means one trip with the boat and then two separate trips with gear. And that carry is 1.8 miles one way. So that's, uh, I don't know, 8 to 10 miles with a year in sucking mud. And that probably is flooded too. So that is definitely a no-go. So what I'm going to do is um, just have a short paddle today. I'm going to paddle to the other end of Chisunco Lake, get past here, um, and then camp um, on the road. And then tomorrow I will have an eight-ish mile road portage. Um, so I'm so tempted. I think that today's paddle is only going to take a couple hours, so I'm really tempted to just do the road portage too. But from previous um, road portages, it tends to take about an hour per mile with all the gear. That's just what it's been averaging out to. And for eight miles, and it looks like it's a little uphill according to the map, at least to start with, for like half of that.
Okay, so this is the Longley Stream Road Portage around Mud Brook Carry, um, Mud Pond Carry, whatever. It's uh, so far been a really nice hard packed gravel road. Um, the problem with it is, is that it's eight miles. <laughs> so um, I ended up deciding to just do this today. The campsite that's near here, the two of them both have road access, which I got there at 9.30. I just wasn't comfortable staying all day. I decided to someone could just drive up and realize that I was there. Um, so, um, but it takes me eight hours to do an eight mile walk. Uh, that should get me to Chamberlain Lake about 6.30. Uh, there's some campsites super close, so I think that I will be fine. Um, but I am going to push on. But this road is really pretty with the flowers alongside. Um, so I'll show it to you for a moment. what I'll be doing for the next few hours. Right, so still foraging on the Longley Stream Road, still have a ways to go, um, but I'm just really impressed with myself and how well weighted I got the canoe. So watch this, okay? Hopefully the video captures this as I get it going. Look at that. This is my camp at Thoroughfare. This is the first campsite I've stayed at at the Allagash Wilderness Waterway, um, very close to the entrance. It's a twofer. Um, there is a second site um, just over there, but nobody's there. There's also a four site campsite across the river um, or lake, whatever this is. Nobody's there either, so it's pretty cool. Got my stuff situated down there by the water. Mm -hmm. It's a little dark. Hopefully this comes out okay. But uh, it's really nice and peaceful. I went for a swim when I got here because I was just so hot from that eight mile portage. So, I got the tarp up first, just in case, and then I went for a swim, which felt amazing. And then I got dinner going and finished getting the hammock and everything up, got my feet taken care of. Um, they definitely looked the worst for wear after that long portage. I really, really wanted to keep my feet dry, and then when I was unloading the boat, I kind of fell in the stream so my feet were wet for the whole portage which I was trying to avoid but um, I think they're I think they'll be fine got them dried out air them out overnight I think they'll be good for the next day um, should not be any portages tomorrow so that will help too so, this is my setup it's about seven o'clock now and I just need to still do my journal and route um, for tomorrow. And then do kind of the last little cleanup, hang stuff up. I'll probably use the ridge pull up there, which is super nice. Um, 
It's really nice and clean here. The uh, ranger, when I was checking in, when I mentioned I was probably going to stay here tonight, said that they had actually just been working on it earlier today. So, um, yeah, it's really nice.